Talk Leader Podcast. Dude, Zaheed Valencia, thank you so much for coming through and, and speaking with us. Um, it's been an eventful week for you, sir. You uh, secured another spot at Final X, uh, up a weight class, though. Tell me what, let's let's get into that, man. Tell me what went into that decision, yeah? Um, just getting another opportunity to make a world team, you know, as soon as, uh, I lost at the U S open in Vegas, uh, pretty bomb, but on the drive back the next day, I heard that I'd be able to compete at, uh, 92 kilos. So I just decided why not, you know, the more matches, the better for me, because at the end of the day, it's about making that Olympic team. So I'm just trying to get as much competition as I can get. Well, it seemed to work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. No, it was nice. Uh, I felt good. I'm now ready to uh, put in the work for for, for final. Act. Okay. Was there any trepidation? Like, did you think about it? Like, go, man, 92 is kind of because you're not, you know, here's the thing, right? Like, you know, you were a 79 at one point. Like, it, it, yeah. was, it seems like many moons ago, but there was a point where you were a 79. Jumping up to 92 those was big. Yeah, no, they are. Um, and I'm not that heavy to begin with for 86 kilos, I don't think. I mean, I weighed in a kilo under. I was able to weigh in, I think, at 89 kilos for this tournament to put on a little weight. But ultimately, I just I felt good with my speed and uh, my skill. I was able to kind of maneuver that weight and try to not get underneath them too much um okay you say that but you were you look to me like you were getting underneath and getting through them in, in yeah. a lot of in a lot of scenarios dude um when when you got in there when you were actually you know in the shit yeah did it feel, did it feel different than you thought it would um i for sure felt a lot stronger than i thought uh i was gonna feel against these against these bigger guys but I knew I was ready. I knew I could win. So I just had to wrestle my match and go in and try to tire them out or try to score as much points as I can is, is ultimately what I was thinking. What was that kind of transition like from uh, the U.S. Open, which obviously was a little bit disappointing, but, uh, you know, like changing your mindset and like, all right, I'm going up and, you know, wrestling and just a couple weeks later. Yeah, I mean, after each loss, you know, it's, hum it's humbling thinking what could have gone different, but I don't get too worked up with the wins or losses. You know, I allowed myself 10 minutes to be pissed, but after that, you know, I, for me, I can't do anything about it except continue to grow my wrestling, and then I found out that I could wrestle 92 kilograms, so I was like, okay, let's do it. I'm excited for that. Well, let's, um, let's talk about the match that you lost. Let's talk about Aaron Brooks. Something happened there in in the what happened in the in the second period that you just couldn't get it moving like you did in the first. I think I changed my trying to change my tactics too much. Uh, whenever I was up six, so um, you could even see it at the end of the first period. I just I was up, so I decided not to attack as much. And I think Brooks felt that because even after that first two minutes, he didn't we didn't do much this the last minute. And going into the third, he's like, "Oh shit, he's just gonna, he's gonna hold this lead." And then that's when I felt the kind of the shift change, and he started getting his underhooks and started wearing me down. And I think if I just wrestled that match different and just continued my pace, moving side to side, up down, and creating my offense, I think it would have looked a lot different. I wouldn't have had to carry all those underhooks that I that I didn't have in the first period. Um, but I think he felt that, and I was content with the six-fold lead, um, and that's when he was able to storm back. But I think ultimately what, what changed and what helped me, I think, grow is just continue to put my foot on the gas pedal and just go. I mean, that's just the way I've been wrestling for the past, you know, for, I mean, forever. So I don't want to change it now, and that's helped me kind of go back to that way of thinking. Yeah, look, I – I would agree. And that's all well and good in theory, right? Yeah. Because let's be honest, the pace that you put on in that first, especially the first half of the first period, yeah, it's not easy to keep. 
right? Yeah. Against a high level athlete like that. So, so does it, does, how much of it becomes a literal mental switch and how much of it becomes, man, I got to get back in, in the room and, and I'm, I'm got to, you know, I'm going to be running sprints. I, I'm going to have to really get my cardio up to be able to keep this pace. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's part of it. And I feel like I've been doing good at, you know, training at New York force and having uh, my trainers, my coaches and doing the extra aerodyne workouts. So my conditioning felt good. Um, I think another reason is just feeling those partners. I mean, I need someone bigger for sure um, that we're looking into getting. But as of right now, I know Brooks gets, you know, David Taylor, he gets Carter, he gets Snyder. He has all those guys to wear him out to, and, and have that feel every every day, basically, where the only time I get to feel that type of power or strength is in competition, which that shouldn't be the first time for me. So good looking forward for the Olympics. You know, I'm for sure going to have to fly out, go wrestle, fly out, find some partners, try to bring them down, whatever it is that I have to do. But I think at the same time, I'm so used to attacking and keeping that offense where I've kind of gone into a rhythm of just attacking without using – you know, my full strength or my full endurance because of my fakes and stuff, where at the second period of the match, I was defending. So I was just reacting to everything, which shifts my conditioning and the way I breathe and the way I just control myself because I'm reacting to the underhook or it's to a shot or I'm getting stuck underneath. And that's why I think it, it kind of changed for me that I just got to, even if it's defensively, but stay on the offense, whether it's moving around, keeping my face and stuff like that. How does your conditioning uh, and actually like practices in general change when you shift from, you know, college wrestling where you're wrestling on a regular basis to now just wrestling a few times a year? Um, I don't think it's changed much. I mean, I still wrestle throughout the year. I go through college guys and go um, for sure. There's a lot more experience in the senior level where especially now that I've been in a senior level, uh, a lot of the wrestlers know and they'll try to just weather the storm that whole first period, not do much. Because like, okay, yeah, he's going to take all, all of his energy in, in this first match, try to get the tag. But if I could stop it, then I could slowly storm back. Um, but I just, I just try to be fun and wrestle the best to my ability. And, I mean, if I fall short, at least I go out there slinging. What um, you made mention earlier of wrestle my match in your brain, what is the checklist of Zahid's perfect match? Like, how do you like? Obviously, you know, you've been at this since you were a baby, and you, I don't know if it's changed much, but there's got to be like a, a mental checklist that you go through where this is gonna this is the perfect match um for me it's just making sure i move my feet and my hands and continue my fakes i think that's where i'm best and i saw it i mean i don't know if it's because they're slower they're upper weight but i saw it this past weekend where just little head fakes i mean they don't know what i'm gonna shoot so they're reacting to everything which helps me in the second period because then they can't they still can't use their power or their weight because they're just as exhausted as i am and then i just continue to work on that and drilling that um and getting those fills in the practice room that i know i could still wrestle through any kind of that shape where i'm moving so i think that'll that helps me in that case um okay uh, is there times so that's before the match like you go okay move your hands move your feet get your fakes going yeah is there a time during the match where you go boy i better pick up the the, the output of foot motion i better pick up the output of my hand motion i better pick up my face because he's not reacting he's not he's not biting on this yeah it depends on my opponent obviously you know i'm gonna try whether i hit 10 single legs you know, in a row and, and don't get them, then I go single leg to duck or duck to single leg or duck to, I just, I just know I need to be moving even if I don't score. 
because if I can see them reacting, I know eventually I'm going to be able to get them. So, and then, I mean, try to try to finish and put up my, my, my points, you know, I mean, perfect match would be, you know, take them down, get a gut, get back up, you know, take them down again, lace or whatever, just transition and uh, going from one minute to the next nonstop. Obviously, you've been at it for you know a long time. Um, how would you say you kind of figured out what your your style is and and your your perfect match? How you know is that something that you've kind of worked with coaches on? Is that something you kind of figured out yourself? What is that process? Look yeah, like? I don't. I've never thought about it as like a perfect match or the perfect way to wrestle. It's just my style, and even in college, you know, I knew the the, the way I wrestled and the way I got tired the guys I'm competing with just have to be just as tired. If if I continue to put, you know, their backs against the wall and keep my movement, I'll let them get into their match or their style of match where they just want to hold my wrist, hold the collar tie, weigh on me. Um, and I feel like I can do that with any, anyone just because of my speed. Um, I could go underneath, over, you know, side to side. But it's not really something like I've worked on it's just that's just the way I like to rest um so what does it look like okay <clears throat> you make I, I can't imagine that there was any real dramatic changes that you made on the ride home from Vegas going well that didn't work out but guess what I'm going 92. Yeah. was there was there like a, a bulking day or two like all right let's eat some ice cream man <laughs> like, I mean yeah because I I mean, every day for me is pretty much bulking, even going 86 kilos. Like, I'm just trying to get big, like, probably get up to 195, you know, eating whatever I want. So going into the 86 kilos, just watching my weight for a day that night, and and I'm on weight. Like, I still weigh in. Like, I'll sleep off three, four pounds and weigh in a kilo under for 86. So I knew I didn't have enough time to actually get big. So I just wanted to eat as much as I could, but feeling good because I don't want to be sluggish. I still want to wrestle my match, and I don't want to change anything up on that that end. Zahid, I can distinctly remember you at 106 pounds. Yeah. Um, is it better cutting your legs off to make weight, or is it better bulking? Uh, I mean, bulking is hard too, but – just wrestling at your weight is the best. Like, I mean, I weighed in at 195, just feeling good. Wrestling at 202, so, I mean, that that was perfect for me, just having fun with it, feeling good. You know, okay, so here's the thing, though, right? <clears throat> A kid that is on, let's say, Poway's team, okay? Yeah. That looks at you, says... Yeah, that's okay for Zahid Valencia. He's a he's an absolute stud, NCAA champion, blah, 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 blah. But I got to make this team. Yeah. Would you still give the same advice to a kid to get better and get bigger, even if they couldn't make the team, right? Like a kid like, I don't know, I want, give it a name. Like we got, we got a nice yeah. lineup. You know, it's not easy to make the team. I think it depends on the kid and what they want. I know the reason I went 106 my freshman year, because I was a freshman, and I'm just like, I'm going to go sixes. It's going to give me the best chance, and I'm going to be bigger, stronger than any one of these kids. You know, and I'll say, and it's funny, though, because the parents would be like, oh, he's cheating. You know, he's, he's cutting so much weight. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, but that that's, probably the hardest part of the sport and it's like have your kid drop 30 pounds and go make 106 let's see it. let's see if he can and i did that because i knew and i knew i was gonna there's no way i was gonna let someone beat me after cutting 30 pounds to make 106s so it's it's different but now after my junior year i was just like i was looking at the 182 pound weight class it's my senior year and i was just like i could beat these guys and you know i had fun with it i think i grew more in my wrestling instead of just wrestling to compete with the guys in my weight class or going down and focusing on the cut 
I was just wrestling to rest to wrestle and I felt good and kind of finding new ways. And I think my my kind of offense changed a little bit because I remember I was a little more strategic defensively, you know, get my two points here, write them out, little things like that. And I think that's boring. And I was boring as a freshman. And I kind of just, I think I grew and kind of loved just putting on a show. I mean, that's what fans want to see. I was like, why not make it fun, win or lose? Man, what's that process look like, uh, you know, of being a freshman and cutting all that weight? Like, what does that dis- look like from a, all right, I'm going to go one of sixes to, all right, now I've got to start shrinking down? Yeah, well, it wasn't because I cut a lot of weight, 106, and I went 113s, and then even for 132s when I made that jump, I was probably weighing, like, that summer, I got up, I know probably got up to 160 when I went 132s. But it was always just what we were taught, you know. It was, you cut weight, you're bigger than everyone else, you're going to win. So that's what I did, and I knew I was going to be bigger, I was going to be stronger. Um, But then after... I think what helped is going after that season of 132, that was like 175 that summer. And my brother was 174, 175. So we made the same. We're like, oh, we're both going 170s. Like, I don't care. He's like, so we were going to have to wrestle off. And I'm looking and I'm just like, it's like, it's my last year. Like, I'm way better than everyone. As like I thought that, so I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna go 182s, not worry about my weight, and just have fun with it. So I changed that mindset, and it worked out. I mean, I had a couple of close matches with Miles Bryant my senior year, who's number one, and then the Iron Man. But I think that helped me grow, and I could see the speed change from 132 to 182, and I kind of just make sure to keep that speed even going into college, but. I don't know. I think it's to each their own. If they want to cut or not, I would recommend to not and just grow at wrestling. And maybe you're able to your ceilings higher because you're just focusing on that and your moves instead of I'm going to be big and strong and cut a bunch of weight. Dude, one of my favorite interviews ever was Jordan Oliver after he went from 133 up to 149 he's like yo these dudes are slow (laughs) and like here's the thing right they ain't slow but they're slower than what you're used to yeah talk about that so we we and and this is something that that i want to kind of harp on here in a little bit but in my room we talk about triggers a lot we talk about like okay when you see when you reach and you see him reach now we go right yeah are the windows of opportunity bigger at the upper weights? Yeah, I think so. Just because, I mean, you see those 25 pounds, there's one little fake and their legs sprawled back and they're quick. And yeah, these, they don't want to, I feel like the heavier weights, they don't want to sprawl as much. So it's just head faking. So you kind of just time, time those little things. Uh, when you get the collar tie, how long it takes for them to collar tie you back, and that's how I hit my single legs. Just little things like that, but I for sure have taken a notice from the speed of, you know, just switching one weight class. You know, so I think it's been good, especially if, the, if you're able to keep that speed going up, obviously. That's just what I was going to ask, is as you get bigger, how do you, how do you retain your own speed? Just continuing to wrestle the way I wrestle. I mean, I, I, I'm bigger physically, I lift heavy, but I make sure to do, you know, the little quick twitch muscle, like the jumps, um, the ladders, just anything to keep my quickness and just doing it in the wrestling room, making sure I don't start slowing down my wrestling, but taking those quick shots, snaps to fakes, stuff like that, just so it's routine. What, um, so you snap his hand off you. Yeah. And you want to go single leg. What are you looking for? Like, so, you know, I've heard guys get as granular as like, I've heard JB talk about 
the color of their fingertips change. Like so, he when he when they down block, they can see their fingertips press against the mat, and yeah. they're, they're one color. And then when they release, they're another color, and that's how he knows to go. That's pretty darn granular, dude. Yeah. Like, is there, just, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll I'll notice like just body movements because if I do a collar tie, ninety percent of people are gonna collar tie me bad. Collar tie, their hands coming up, so that's when I shoot. I smack the hand down. I don't shoot right away. I wait for it to come up, so then I shoot underneath it. Um, if I fake one one side of the body, they, they're going to move it back, and I know that before they even do it because they have to. So I fake I'm already shooting the other side. So just knowing kind of what your opponent's going to do before the, they even do it is, I think, what helps me even continue with my speed. It makes me look faster than I actually am because I'm getting into positions where they don't know why because you know, they're putting their hand up because I initiated a call in time. So I'm in, in there. We're faking one, we're faking ankle pick so that I go to my snap and then wait for them to come up so that I shoot. Just movements like that. Here's the thing though, right? How do you learn that? Is it drilling? Is it sparring? Is it wrestling a I think drilling is hard. I think it's gotta be as far and just kind of just flow with it, just up, down. It could be like moving your hands. And even during the match, just because they'll react if I do a collar tie, then I'll do an elbow bind and they'll hold on. But then you let them go and then you go back in, you know what they're going to do. So then you can work out another move, you know, open your elbow, get on your knees. But it's just, I think just sparring that, knowing, okay, he's here. He's here. Okay, this is how he reacts. And most wrestlers react the same, you know. For the most part, because it's just normal defense, which you're gonna do. But and then you find that out, and then it's I, be, I think it becomes a lot easier. How do you stay ahead of the eight ball in that you're getting them to react to what you're doing as opposed to you reacting to to what they're doing? Uh, starting off the whistle, I think it's making it known. You know, I always go down on my knees, and if they don't react to that, then I'm gonna blast through them in the first five seconds so i think just initiating it getting down getting into your positions i mean sometimes i'll have a wrist caught and they'll try to hold that but i have my other hand free so i'm still faking snapping and i'll let them have the wrist it's just finding out those positions and that comes i think from the sparring and the hand fighting and just finding different different ways to score how much are you spent how much time are you spending right now in the spar right so like i assume you're going with chenzo a bunch i'm sure you're going with your brother brother yeah i'm going uh i've been going with my little brother he's big and strong right now too mm -hmm. um uh we're doing i do a good amount of spar we start with the drilling just positions that we need you know under knees or under hugs or the stuff that we're struggling in and then after a few of those, and I'll go into my sparring, fast drilling, and get into positions, and then we'll go right live. And then we'll six minutes or ten minute go, or little or little short goes that we have depending on the day. Um, but yeah, at least a little bit of sparring every day for sure. So you're t 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, probably 10, 15 minutes before going to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has that changed since college? Have you added more, taken some away? Uh, I think I added more sparring. And then even the way we drill, like when I'm going with Chenzo and my brothers, um, they say we're drilling single legs. Get a single leg, but it goes kind of like, I'll give him a different look. look so it's like a different spar each time. Single leg, then he has to finish on the ground. Or I'll stay up with it, and I just finish on the feet but it's different positions each time but it's still drilling the same move so it's kind of like just like a spar field to the finish so even with the drilling oh. just add that how important do you think sparring is for for younger guys that maybe don't have as much experience i think it'll help mostly with their like i think they need to know the, the technique and the fundamentals and once they have all that and then the sparring, I think it's going to get them more used to their body and what they can do and what they can spar out of. Like some people are long and lengthy and they could get out of, uh, 
you know, if they're extended and get their head to the other side or just kind of play with that. I think they're going to learn their bodies and how to flip and how to turn. And um, like this weekend, like Colin, whenever you try getting that, that duck, I just kind of hip them in. But that's just, I've done that in practice so many times where I get beat underneath with the head. So I'll just move to the same side and just instead of using my hands to block, I use my hips. And that just comes from the sparring. So I think if kids want to know the fundamentals, if they could get into a lot of sparring, it'll help for sure. I think, um, you know, the last time I was out there with y'all, you, you spent a good amount of time strength training. Yeah. What, uh, how much of your time is spent in the weight room right now? Um, with the Air Force now, it's very, it's, it's not that much, three times a week. Um, and I'm in there no longer than an hour 15. I get what I have to do. And it's like an individual plan to each athlete, whether if I need more endurance or more speed, and we'll do heavy lifts and mix them in with, you know, uh, quick jumps or, um, barbell jumps or dumbbell jumps something like that but it's very specific so i don't think i need much and they have it all down to the science and stuff i love it you enjoy it though yeah i enjoy it i like lifting I really good i hated it i was like just let me wrestle i just want to wrestle i, I couldn't stand it but again you don't have much of a choice, right? Like you got, like you got to get bigger, right? Yeah, Especially for ninety-two kilo. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't have a choice. They have, they have my plan, and they help me with what foods I should eat, and I get my protein shakes after. Um, and yeah, because I mean, I over the past summer, I I remember I got up to two hundred, but because I could get up there, I could eat. It's just holding it, holding it is where once i get back into like hard training where i'm dropping six seven pounds of practice then i'll go in one day and be like 190 and i'm just like what the heck it's just so hard it's so hard to hold that what are your strategies for for keeping your weight up so uh you know once you get it up there and you notice that you're dropping back down how do you kind of get it back up and and hang on yeah there? we got to kind of maneuver the practice what kind of practice i'm having and can't miss a meal, add a meal here. But I don't get too much into the food. I know what's good. Like I'll have, like I cook dinner every night and then I have my meals. But at the end of the day, I don't really care how much I weigh as long as I'm winning. Talk to me about the prospect of making your first senior team, man. Cause you gotta be stoked. You've been at this for a while. How long have you thought about making this team? Well, for a while now, I remember my first final X was with Dake. I have done with Dake and then fell short the next year, I think third. So I've been on the national team for a few years now, but I've fallen short. I fell short with David last year. So, I mean, it's something I've been looking forward to for a while and I've been falling short. So I'm just excited. You know, I think I, I, after the US Open, I thought I fell short again. That was it for my summer and my year. But getting that opportunity to wrestle 92 kilograms, I mean, I'm going to make the most of it. I'm, I think I'm the guy. I think I could do it, but we'll see. I got to show up. So I think a lot of people were expecting to see you and Nate in the finals. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A little bit shocked, but, you know, seeing him lose to Tanner Sloan. Did that yeah. did that kind of raise your eyebrows? Like, oh crap! I gotta I gotta watch this kid now too, <laughs> you know? Um, no, not necessarily. Because I saw I was kind of saw the match a little bit. I think he got laced up, and ended up being ten two. And then I saw Nate was storming back and barely lost. So I was just like, I think for sure Nate was the better wrestler, <laughs> and I'm just gonna happen to wrestle someone that caught him in the lace and was able to hold the lead. So I didn't think that necessarily was going to be a tougher match. But I knew I still had to wrestle good because of what he did to Nate. 
but I was I was ready to beat everyone there, no matter who who it was. What's your mindset like when you uh, are expecting to wrestle somebody and you start to get you get somebody else? No, I don't really I don't really think about it. It's just whoever's in front of me and be like, okay, oh, I have this guy, okay. Let's do it. I'm still gonna wrestle the same exact way I would wrestle Nate, same exact way I wrestled Slaw. All right, so we're gonna ask you a question. And I'm gonna come back to it because I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to think about it. Okay. Okay. If you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about the sport of wrestling what would it be now you don't have to fire off an answer right away but if you have one this, this in the whole sport of wrestling you know college uh, just freestyle anything you want anything you want doesn't have to be freestyle doesn't have to be international if anything. i could change one thing i would yeah. take away i would take away folks on wrestling and make everything freestyle in the, in the u.s so many people are saying it like it's yeah. uh, Okay. All right. Well, now hold on a second. Hold on a second. You did grow up doing a lot of folk style, dude. You did. Yeah. No, I did but, a lot just because I had to. Okay. So that brings me to the next question. Do you think that you are folk style? And again, you're preaching to the choir. I'm. I'm just sitting yeah. here arguing with you just to argue with you. Do you think that your folk style? in any way influence let's say the toughness that you have on a freestyle map because let's be honest right we have a note we're notorious for being like hand fight and single leg and push you out of bounds the, the those russians and iranians don't want to mess with us when it comes yeah. to a long match did your folk style background help that at all um I no, I wouldn't. I think it was just my wrestling. I I I did. I've done freestyle since I started the sport. We would do our folk style season, and then freestyle season we do freestyle. And we did Greco. We did Greco all the way up just because we knew one was gonna help us with the other, and so on. But I think America would be even better because we have guys that are so good collegiately, and they're like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm done absolutely college wrestling because i've never done freestyle ever in my entire life i think we miss out on a few guys and i don't think taking someone down and folk style is so different and i don't think you have to be as precise or as sharp on your takedown because of all the funk and all the rolling just rolling around which i think we get screwed on when they make the transition to freestyle where the shots aren't pre precise you're gonna get thrown over you're gonna get hit by sit or whatever and give up cheap points when I feel like the U.S. could be a lot better, even in like front headlock position and stuff. So I think it hit there. I'm a hundred percent with you, but you know how much money is involved in in folk style. Like the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I would keep every. I love the NCAA tournament. I would keep everything exactly the same. Just make it freestyle. Still have Pac-12. Still have Big Ten. Still have everything wrestle but it's just freestyle matches that's hard man i look this thing folks that was so boring so boring you see a guy ride I, for six minutes 100 percent with you okay but like the logistics involved in doing that you could first of all i'm going to be completely honest and this sucks to say but so many high school coaches will be pissed because they don't know anything about freestyle so many high school coaches would be like i don't I got to learn another language. No, I'm not going to do it. And so there's that, but we, there would have to be a slow phase. Like, okay. Freshmen start like the, like incoming freshmen, you, you are wrestling freestyle. When did it? Well, yeah. When did folk style even start? Cause I remember when I grew up, we started with freestyle, like little local tournaments that we did were freestyle tournaments. I don't really, really remember much, but I know that. And then it kind of, as we got older, it was more, it was more folk style centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but I do, I do know that there is so much money involved in, in the fact, and there's just so much money wrapped up in folk style wrestling right now. It would be a really, really difficult transition. Although it's something that I've been pushing for for literally longer than probably you've been alive. 
And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like this is something that like I've literally been trumpeting for years and it was hard. It was a lot harder to do in 2008 when during the ball draw eras, like, cause that yeah. sucked like that, that version of yeah. freestyle sucked. Like, but still, even then I was like, dude, we should still be doing freestyle. Yeah. No, I like the way it is now with freestyle. It's more exciting. It's a faster, no overtimes. You win, you lose. That's it. Um, I mean, it would have helped me, you know, I used to get at least five takedowns, but then the score would be 10 to five after I cut them. It'd just be 10-0. Like, I like, yeah. I like the three-point takedown rule. I would have loved that. Three points and one escape. I would have helped my matches out for sure a lot. But does, doesn't it just seem like they're just going in the direction of freestyle? Yeah, anyway? why are they doing that? The out-of-balance rule, they're trying to make it more exciting, just make it freestyle. Yeah. Why why even create a whole new sport when we're not gonna use it past that? Like you either like wrestling or you don't. It doesn't matter. It's like just change it to what's gonna help America in the future to go continue winning gold medals at the Olympics. How do you think it would have impacted your career specifically if you wrestled freestyle all the way up? Um I think I am where I am now because I did wrestle freestyle every year. I did I did both and I did Greco. And what helped is when there started when my junior year I made three junior world teams and I was very involved in that. So being able to travel and seeing all these other countries and these different fields. I think that's why a lot of these younger guys are stepping up and doing good, you know, when it was I think like the first group was like me and Dane, and then we were like the first juniors to make like a senior team while we were still in college, or yeah, senior national team while we were in college. And now you see a lot more of these college guys making national team, which you didn't see that before. But I think it's because of the experience they've had in the cadet and in the junior level. So, I think yeah, they got to do for that. That yeah, the bringing back cadet worlds was a huge huge lift for us yeah like that was huge and and you guys were part of that first crop yeah you know between you and mark hall and dayton and all those cats do you feel some like i don't know you gotta feel a little bit proud that like you kind of started putting the u.s back on the map right because before that, there was some dark days. <laughs> yeah, 2010. I can remember watching, yeah. going, "What am I doing up at four o'clock in the morning watching this shit?" <laughs> Nobody's winning. It was tough to watch. Yeah, God. yeah no, it was. Uh, no, it's uh, it's. I'm for sure happy that we were able to kind of make that next jump of you know just the depths that we have now. I feel like is a lot deeper. You know, even at 86 and 92, there's more than one guy that can really wrestle um, and kind of make it interesting for, for the weight. So I think it's been good, especially that cadet juniors, for sure, has helped. All right, yeah. I'm going to end with this, Zaheed. It, is there one mantra that you say in your head before you compete is there something that you repeat to yourself is there something that you say to yourself every time just to get yourself in the right mindset just don't trip <clears throat> don't trip everything happens for a reason i mean i put i put the work in. i know what it's, i'm gonna get out of it so you just gotta let it fly don't trip don't trip about wins or losses that's how i think of it that's amazing. All right. Zahid Valencia, once again, thank you so much for coming on. It's really yeah. appreciated, brother. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on. All right, bud. We'll talk to y'all later.